we know GABA is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And we know that caffeine is really helpful. People need to be more awake. They need to be more stimulated. They need to get shit done. We get that. But if you drink too much caffeine, you might be decreasing the capacity for your brain to calm down, to relax, because you're not going to be allowing GABA, this neurotransmitter, to calm your brain down. And it can be a, a vicious cycle. Hello, my name is Dr. Scott Scherr. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Transcriptions, as well as Health Optimization Medicine and Practice. I'm also a board-certified internal medicine physician. Hi, I'm Dr. Ted Giacoso. I'm the founder of Health Optimization Medicine and Practice. I'm also the founder of Smarter Not Harder, the company that actually makes uh, the transcriptions lines of products. We know that caffeine is the most widely used and abused and abused nootropic in the world. Uh, caffeine is a brain-enhancing compound. It increases alertness, it incre increases wakefulness, and it does it by blocking something called the adenosine receptors in the brain. Yes. And when this happens, adenosine is a neurotransmitter. It has a lot of other functions, as we know. Mm -hmm. but adenosine works as a neurotransmitter to help you feel sleepy. Mm -hmm. So when caffeine blocks the adenosine receptors, adenosine cannot bind, mm -hmm. and you feel more wakeful. Right. But if you drink lots of caffeine, this can be a problem. Yes, especially if you take caffeine at a later time of the day, right? right. Uh, for example, um, I have a general caffeine cutoff for myself at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, because I sleep at around 11 or 11.30. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lie, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you <But> try. <laughs> I try. But the rule of thumb is around 12 to 14 hours before you sleep. You shouldn't be taking any more caffeine. And there are people that can, they're called fast metabolizers of caffeine and slow metabolizers, right? So I have some friends, some patients that can drink caffeine right before they go to bed. Mm -hmm. And I have some people that have more coffee even after like 12 or 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. and they can't go to bed. So you kind of have to know a little bit about your caffeine sensitivity, right? Yeah. You know, overall. But what I think what we want to talk about today was caffeine does affect these adenosine receptors in the brain, but it also affects the GABA system. And what we now know is that GABA is a very important neurotransmitter, of course, to help relax the brain. It calms us down. This is not what we're trying to do with caffeine, right? We're trying to wake ourselves up. Yeah. And so what caffeine does is it desensitizes these GABA receptors to bind GABA. So what's gonna happen, right? You're gonna have more of the excitable neurotransmitter instead, glutamate. Mm -hmm. and glutamate is gonna make you feel more awake. Mm -hmm. When you feel more awake, that's what you want with caffeine, but over time, what happens is you decrease the amount of the capacity for GABA to bind this, to this receptor, you're gonna need more and more caffeine to get the stimulation. It's and tolerance, the, it's called tolerance. Yes, exactly. And then at the same time, if you stop drinking caffeine, mm -hmm you're gonna have this imbalance between mm -hmm. too much of that glutamate, which is the excitatory neurotransmitter, mm -hmm. and too little of the GABA because it can't bind to the receptor. Mm -hmm. So this is the MSG syndrome, right? Yeah, yeah. It used to be derogatorily called the China restaurant syndrome because yeah. uh, you would go to a restaurant who don't know that uh, the food uh, has uh, MSG in it, and it's usually a Chinese restaurant. Right. right? And you would get like uh, these headaches or, or nausea, dizziness. Mm -hmm. And that's because uh, glutamine in excess is actually a neurotoxic uh, a substance. Right? right. So glutamine is the precursor amino acid. Yeah. And we have it turns into glutamate in yeah. the brain, yeah. or you could eat glutamate too, like an MSG. Mm -hmm. And then there's this balance between glutamate and GABA in the brain. Mm -hmm. Right. So glutamate is actually the excitatory. GABA is the inhibitory, mm -hmm. and they're always in balance, and actually the GABA gets turned from glutamate to, mm -hmm. to GABA itself. And MSG is monosodium glutamate, right. so you have glutamate right there. Right, and so what's happening with caffeine is that it's desensitizing your GABA system, and so if you all of a sudden stop drinking your caffeine, you're gonna get this way huge amount of glutamate in balance with the GABA, and that's why you get these terrible headaches and, the, and feel terrible when you're trying to stop drinking caffeine like many of us. You know, one thing we always talk about too here is that Many of our patients and people just in general, because we see this in clinical practice, are GABA deficient. Mm -hmm. This may be from drinking too much caffeine and getting this insensitivity. It could also be because there's lots of other reasons why they need GABA, might be GABA deficient, right? Well, uh, I always say this is that, you know, we have built a hyperstimulative world for ourselves. And therefore, we just like sympathetic activation, we like excitatory neurotransmitter activation, and so on. And we really have forgotten that the base of everything is a parasympathetic tone, right? Uh, especially during the day, and then at nighttime, we simulate the day with light, right? And therefore, you know, light is actually a toxin. It's called a phototoxin, right? Right, right. So we, we haven't learned to modulate this for ourselves, and, and therefore, you know, you see a lot of people who are actually fatigued, and Usually what you'll see with them is they have a low GABA in their brain, mm -hmm. right? Uh, as manifested by 
a certain uh, signs and symptoms. Right. right, so we have, I mean, commonly with GABA deficiency, we see anxiety, actually, mm -hmm. depression, mm -hmm. insomnia, mm -hmm. tremors, irritability. Mm -hmm. It's even been associated with things like OCD and schizophrenia. So yeah. we know that having a GABA system that's optimized is really important. But like, like you said, m many of us don't know how to turn off anymore. We just, you woke up <clears> that way this morning. <laughs> Especially when I'm around you. But <laughs> <laughs> So we know GABA deficiency is a big problem, like mm -hmm. insomnia, depression, anxiety, tremors, it's even been associated with things like OCD and schizophrenia. The problem is it's really difficult to test for. It's really a, a kind of a clinical diagnosis. Mm. And most clinicians, even consumers, people that are trying to find out where, how they're feeling, just can't, don't, know how, don't know how to find that information, right? So, I mean, we just have to do this. I mean, how do you kind of suggest people think about this? Well, uh, in a, an academic sense, right? This is our fault too, right. because there is the excitatory neurotransmitter brain, which is glutamate, and there is the inhibitory neurotransmitter, uh, which is GABA, right? No one is paying attention to these. Everyone's paying attention to what I call the superstar neurotransmitters. Everyone's concerned about dopamine and norepinephrine and serotonin, right? Uh, and and uh, opiate receptors and blah, blah. But no one's paying attention to this bigger on and off switch of the brain, right? So uh, in a hyper simulative world, uh, we need to learn how to turn ourselves off, right? right? So right. the way I like to deal with this first is to shift the perspective right. into, yeah, we have on and off switches in the brain. And then let's set aside the superstar neurotransmitters first because, you know, dopamine is the neurotransmitter of abuse, you know, <laughs> yes. um, uh, because it's pleasurable, blah, blah. But, you know, in, in the end, when you rest at night, you know, what you need is actually a, a very good gabaton. And you could see the, per, um, the pervasive effects of having low GABA levels in the brain. We know GABA is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And we know that caffeine is really helpful. People need to be more awake. They need to be more stimulated. They need to get shit done. We get that. But if you drink too much caffeine, you might be decreasing the capacity for your brain to calm down, to relax, because you're not gonna be allowing GABA, this neurotransmitter, to calm your brain down. And it can be a, a vicious cycle, and a very difficult cycle to break, because if you stop drinking caffeine, you feel terrible, so you go back to caffeine, and I've certainly been on this roller coaster before. So if you're gonna to try to stop drinking caffeine or decrease the amount, do it slowly. I've done this a number of times with my patients. Do you have like a good way for people to kind of come off caffeine? I have, I have a couple ideas. What I, what I would typically do with my patients is have them do like half-calf for a while and kind of slowly decrease the amount. Have you had any success there? No, no. <laughs> um, you know, my experience with uh, addiction to something, uh, caffeine is certainly an addiction. It right? is, yeah. Um, is an addiction to alcohol. Uh, not me. You know, alcohol loves me, but I hate alcohol. No, <laughs> correction, alcohol hates me. Um, <laughs> you are Asian, so. <laughs> I know. Uh, is that it has to be done really in uh, incremental doses because you're going to get headaches. Right. Um, you know, you're, you're going to get irritability and all of that if you just stop suddenly. Right. That's because of the caffeine withdrawal syndrome, right? right? Which we're, you were, right. talking we're talking about. about yeah. Partly related um, to glutamate, right. Yeah, so uh, what I really recommend is the titration downward, right. as, as, as you suggested. You know, for one alcoholic patient I had to deal with, the titration went on for 20 years. So wow. uh, I hope it doesn't take that long for you to, to titrate your caffeine down. But the other thing is that if you're just a one cup person a day yeah. like I am, you can establish a virtuous cycle instead of a vicious cycle. Uh, a virtuous cycle would be taking your caffeine before a designated amount of time that's uh, uh, for 10, uh, 12 to 14 hours before your time of sleep. Yes. Right? So, I mean, we're not saying that caffeine is bad for you, especially in low doses. It's actually been shown to be potentially yeah. protective in some ways. I think the challenge is that if people are drinking too much caffeine, especially caffeine with like the sugary drinks. Oh, that's another drinks. class altogether. Yeah, exactly. If you you're know, having those that's, that's a sugar addiction. That's not a <laughs> caffeine addiction. <laughs> well, I think the combination, it's like having, you know, vodka and Red Bull. You don't want to do that together. It's like, you're going to get crazy, right? And the same thing with caffeine and a whole bunch of sugar, these ups and downs, the, the crashes that you get in between. Oh, I'm going to get a spiced pumpkin latte, 1,200 calories. <laughs> Every four hours. <laughs> Every four hours. <laughs> because you're going to crash up and down, right? So caffeine is okay, low doses. With sugar, that's a different thing entirely. <laughs> but if you're thinking about maybe you're drinking too much caffeine, you may be depleting your GABA levels. This may be making it hard for you to sleep. It may be making you more irritable. So think about GABA in the context of how much caffeine you're drinking. Don't worry about if you're drinking a little bit, but if you're drinking a lot, 
think about kind of coming down on that so you, you might actually see a significant benefit in your overall ability to turn off at night. Uh, guys, you know, uh, we're the company that's actually bringing forward the issue of GABA deficiency syndrome. Uh, everyone has ignored uh, every other neurotransmitter. We're bringing back the off switch of the brain, and which is very important, especially now that our world is really too hyper-stimulating, especially for kids.